and of course you can play with the size of these dots because if you go like this you will make them smaller hey everyone welcome to my new tutorial the holiday season is finally here so throughout december there will be some xmas themed tutorials and process videos and let's start with this cute hot chocolate mug and i really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do please don't forget to leave that like and if you're new around here hit that subscribe now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let me delete the cube and the light so let's drag the selection press x and choose delete and now we'll start with the mug and first we'll just create the profile for the mug and then we'll use the screw modifier to bring it to life so let's press one on the numpad for a front view and easiest way to create the single vertex is to go edit preferences and enable extra objects add-on so just search for extra and choose add mesh extra objects and now if you press shift a you will see a single vert option right here let's click it and it will go directly into the edit mode so you don't need to tab in and make sure you have the vertex select mode active and you can just start extruding right away so let's press e then x and extrude it to the side like this and don't worry about the scale for now and now let's press e to extrude a few of these and now towards the top like this let's go higher a little bit and then let's curve this out a little bit okay like this and now we can just go to the modifiers panel and let's add screw modifier right here and now let's just go and add some more modifiers so let's collapse this and let's add solidify modifier right here and let's go negative thickness like this and finally we can add subdivision surface modifier just like that and basically that's everything you need to create uh, this object just make sure in the screw modifier you choose to merge otherwise uh, it would create a hole right there so that's the mug for now and let's just create a handle so let's select this vertex hold shift select the other one hold shift s and snap cursor to select it that will only help us to move the cursor right here so we can now tab out and let's press shift a and we'll add a plane now tap into the edit mode and let's scale it down like this and let's look from the front again and we'll press G and move it towards the bottom like this and now let's enable x-ray view so we can select both of these on the other side as well and now let's press G to move it slightly like this and we'll continue extrusion this way okay just like that and of course we can then update the size but don't worry about this right now and let's make it wider a little bit so let's press a to select all s then y and scale it up a little bit now we can tab out and let's add solidify modifier here as well let's make it larger like this and let's add that subdivision surface as well here and to control the shape let's disable x-ray view and now let's tap into the edit mode and we can press ctrl r to add loop cut in the middle and that will help us to make this more rounded uh, just like this and now let's refine the shape so first of all let's go back to the solidify and let's make this a little bit thicker and we can make this thicker as well like that and now let's look from the front by pressing one on a numpad tap into the edit mode and enable x-ray again and we'll move these parts around so they look like they're stuck to the mug and let's move the whole thing outside a little bit like this and now you can tab out and scale this however you want and let's make the subdivision to level right click shade smooth let's exit the x-ray and now let's hold shift s and snap cursor to world origin if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you sometimes feel I'm going too fast and there are a lot of things happening at once, um, I have very limited time here to create these weekly tutorials. So you might want to check my online courses um, that are carefully designed to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, even textured environment in the most effective and linear way. So you get to learn all of the things you can see here step by step from the beginning. Um, and there's a lot of content 
hours and hours of material, so if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. And now we'll create a candy cane, so let's select the mag, press H to hide, let's look from the front by pressing 1 on an ampad, and again we'll use single vertex, so let's press shift A, mesh and single vert, add single vert, and now press E then Z to extrude this up, like this, now E then X to extrude on the X axis, and E then Z again to go down. And now select these two vertices and press Ctrl, Shift and B to enable vertex bevel and increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel like this. So it's quite dense but not that much. Something like this should work. And make sure you go close as possible with these two but you don't want to overlap them and just select them both, press M and merge at center. So we get rid of those two there. And basically that's everything we need, so let's tab out and let's right click and convert to curve. And in the curve settings, in the geometry section, let's increase the depth like this. Now tab in and we can control the control points to make this shorter. Now let's tab out and let's reduce the resolution to something like 2. And right click and convert to mesh. So this way we created this mesh using only the single vertex and curve. And now let's press Ctrl R and add some more cuts. So they're basically same density as the cuts along this curve right here. And let's add a few more here as well. Okay, like this. Now let's step out and let's go to the modifiers panel and let's select decimate modifier. And let's go unsubdivide method right here and let's go one iteration and this will create this swirly mesh and that's exactly what we need right here so let's just go ahead and apply this modifier and now we'll refine the endpoints so tap back in alt click this loop and press e then z extrude it up a little bit press s to make it smaller and f to fill and we'll do the same thing towards the bottom, so E then Z, press S to make it smaller, and then F to fill. And now we can just tab out and again add subdivision surface with two levels of subdivision, right click and shade smooth. So let's press Alt H and let's position this a little bit better. So press R then X and lean it towards the side like this and then press R then Z twice to rotate and of course you can make it smaller if you wish and if you want to make this thicker so it's more stylized you can just tab in press a to select all and press alt s and hold shift for smaller increments and make it a little bit thicker if you want okay something like this i think this will look great and now let's press shift a and we'll add a circle and let's keep it 32 vertices so let's just tab in and press ctrl f for the face menu and choose grid fill. Now let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad and again enable x-ray view, press S to scale it down. Now look from the front by pressing 1 on an ampad and you can move it in the edit mode or you can just tab out and move it alongside with the origin point. So press G then Z and move it up like this. Okay. And now we can go ahead and add subdivision surface modifier and two levels of subdivision. And now we can go ahead and add displace modifier and let's create a new texture. Let's go to the texture settings and choose clouds. And here we'll go a little bit larger like this. And now back in the modifiers panel, let's reduce the strength. And finally in the direction, we'll choose only Z. And now to make this look a little bit better, let's disable X-ray view. If you don't want it to go inside the mug, but kind of just bend inside, so it looks like a dense liquid near the edges. You can tab in, make it smaller. So it nearly, so it barely touches like this. Now hold Alt and select the loop around, hold Alt Shift and select these other ones as well. We can help ourselves by activating X-Ray, hold Alt Shift again and select this. And now press E, right click to release and S to scale it up. And now we'll disable the X-Ray again. Let's go like this. And now we can press E then Z and move it down. And that will help us to bend it inside a little bit better. Okay, right click and shade smooth. And now small marshmallows. So let's press Shift A and let's create a cube. And we could have saved the default cube, but alas, it was not her fate. 
So let's make this smaller in the object mode. Now tab out and add bubble modifier. Let's make the amount smaller like this and add two segments and let's add subdivision surface. Right click shade smooth. So I think this will work nicely. If you want, you can go and make it like a more protruded here. So it's more stylized, um, however you like. And now let's go ahead and enable face project and align rotation to target and project individual elements. And now we can just press G and hold control to snap it to the surface like this. And now press Alt D and by holding control, we can snap few of these around. And if you want to rotate them, you can press R twice to enable trackball rotation like this. And just play around with this and position them however you like. And of course, you can variate the size as well. Okay, quite like it. Okay, so that's for the modeling. Now let's go ahead and create some textures. And with the candy cane, we have a great mesh, so we don't need any textures here. Let's just select it and let's go to the render settings and choose cycles. I will choose GPU and enable some denoising and switch to optics because I have the NVIDIA GPU and reduce the samples to something like 512, both for viewport and render. And now let's hold Ctrl Alt and hit zero to move the camera here. Select the camera, press G and Z twice to move it out and now press ctrl b to limit the render preview only to camera bounds and hold z and preview the rendered and now we can press shift a and add light and area light press g then z and move it up and increase the power a little bit this is not the final lighting of course this is just for us to make texturing a little bit easier and now let's select the cane Let's go to the materials panel and let's create a new one. Let's call this white. And I want this glossy, so let's reduce the roughness almost all the way down. And increase the color all the way to white. And now let's create a new material slot here. Tap into the edit mode. Choose face select, so press 3 or click here. Now hold Alt and select one of these loops. And now hold Alt Shift and select the other one as well. And basically that's all we need. So let's hit assign here and create a new material. And let's make this red or something in between red and purple. And again, we'll reduce the roughness almost all the way down. And we have a nice candy cane right here. So let's select the Mac. And here I will need to convert this to mesh again, because right now this is non-destructive. So you can still go ahead and play with the shape you know, of the Mac or whatever you want. But at some point we'll need to convert this so we can create UV map. Of course, we'll keep the solidify and subdivision, but we'll need to apply the screw. So let's just go ahead and do that and hit apply. And now we'll unwrap this. So tap into the edit mode and hold Alt and select the bottom loop and press U and choose mark seam. And basically we'll need to create one seam um, and depending on the camera view you plan to render, uh, preferably it should be one on the other side. So let's go to the other side and pick one right here. I think that will work nicely. So press U and mark seam. You can see it's marked on the other side. Now let's expand this view right here. And let's choose this to UV editor. And let's hit A to select all in the viewport. Press U and choose unwrap so this is something you should get now um, I use the UV squares add-on you can just go ahead and find it I think on the blender market and there's an option to adjust this to grid by shape and I'll do this but of course you can do it yourself you just need to align one of these uh, faces I will show you how to do it you just select one of these enable snapping to vertex here press G then Y and hold control to snap it right next to this now select this one, press G then X and hold control to snap it there. And now we'll of course snap this one. So basically you need to get one of these. And now if you select everything else here, except um, the bottom of course, 
and go for face select and hold shift and select this face or just click it twice so it's active then you can right click here and follow active quads and it will do the same thing as this add-on function right there so now we have a nice flat uv and we can create some dots of course you can go ahead and download some like polka dot texture or something like that but we can easily create this procedurally so let's bring up one more view right here and let's switch to shader editor and this panel gets in the way so i'll press n to hide it and let's create a new material right there and let's call this mug and we have the principal shader right there so let's press shift a and create a texture and create a voronoi and now to be able to preview the texture node, you go edit preferences add-ons and search for node wrangler. This is the one, just check the box, close the preferences. And now if you hold control and shift and click the node, you will see it will plug into the surface node. So that allows you to preview this. And right now we can press shift A and add another node and there'll be converter and color ramp. Let's just plug it right here and we'll compress this down from both sides so we create these nice sharp dots not too sharp be careful so it doesn't start to pixelate like this and of course you can now play with the Voronoi randomness and if you start bringing it down it it gets less and less random or you can just set it to zero and you will get nice dots all around and now to be able for this uv because right now if you rotate it nothing happens so let's press shift a and let's go input and texture coordinate and let's just plug uv right here and now we can just scale this up or down and rotate it so let's press r and rotate and you know what i will do it alongside with this on the bottom so let's select both of those i will bring it closer a little bit Let's select both of those and press R, then 45 degrees here in the UV editor. And let's make this larger. Now you will see you get this nice dot shape. Okay, maybe something like this. And of course, you can play with the size of these dots because if you go like this, you will make them smaller. Okay, maybe larger like that. Okay, and here on the top, I will apply different different material anyway, so don't worry about how this looks. So let's just select these, move them aside, and we'll press Shift A and choose color and mix color, plug it here. Make sure you plug it into the factor. And for the A, we'll go white. And for the B color, let's choose red or something in between, like the candy cane. And we can maybe make it a little bit darker. Okay. And now make sure you hold Control Shift and click the principal shader so it's connected. And let's connect this to base color. And let's reduce the roughness of the mug like this. We can now tab out. And let's press Control C over the red color and create the new material here. And let's press Control V here so we get the same color. And let's do the same for the roughness. And now I want to make this rim and inside of the mug a little bit different. So let's go to the modifiers panel and we'll apply the solidify. So let's hit apply right here. Tab into the edit mode, press A to select all and press shift N to recalculate normals just in case. And now let's go back to the solid preview and let's hit slash on an ampad to go into the local view. Select the bottom faces like this and now hold control and with the plus on an ampad you can increase the selection all the way up here and let's do two more loops like this and in the material tab let's create a new material slot and let's create a new material there and hit assign now if i go into the render preview you will see we now have two materials right there and let's make the inside glossy as well and let's give it white color now we can press slash on an ampad again and let's select the chocolate or the liquid here. Let's create a new material and let's choose a color. It looks nicely. And of course, we'll need to go down with the roughness as well. And maybe make it darker. Okay. And for the marshmallows, let's create a new material. 
and here we'll use a little bit of a subsurface so something like 0 0.1 and make sure with the radius you go 0 0.1 as well so it's not too deep and maybe give this a little bit different color like this okay and now let's press shift a and create a plane tap into the edit mode scale it up that'll be our background tab out let's look from the camera and now we can play with the lighting a little bit so let's select the main light and we'll increase and we'll increase the power to something like 150 and play with the position so press g then shift z to move it along the x and y axis and move it further back like this and now we can press shift d to duplicate and again shift z let's make it smaller maybe move it down a little bit and create the light from the side of course you can press r twice to rotate this and let's give this a little bit different color something warmer and now select the background create a new material and we'll go something like this here and now let's duplicate this light once again and place it down here let's make it smaller and they'll create a nice backlight right here let's ramp this up to something like 500 okay and maybe a little bit warmer tone okay and maybe this is too dark so let's play with this color as well like this and i will copy the same color to our mug and maybe we can play some of these marshmallows around And of course you can go ahead and play you know with the background so pick whatever you like um, i will probably experiment with this some more and choose something that works well um, with this kind of composition but all in all i think this looks fine so that's it for this cozy hot chocolate xmas illustration i really hope you enjoyed this one and if you did please leave that like and again if you're new around here and want to see more tutorials hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day